Alright guys, how's it going? My name is Ian, and this is Drake, who you've never met before. Hey. And uh, you obviously know me, because this is my YouTube channel. But anyway, we're going to be doing a like impromptu stream of consciousness, just like, short little review of Bioshock Infinite, because we both just beat it, and we have a lot of, I think we have a lot, I have a lot of things to say about it, do you? Yeah. So we're going to talk about it for a little while, and the way we're going to do it is like this. The first five minutes, and I'll announce when these five minutes are starting, are going to be spoiler free, only things from like the trailers and like the first five to fifteen minutes. Just not much, you know, information about the game at all. After five minutes, and we'll announce when this period is up, we are going to be dropping spoiler bombs like there is no tomorrow. So if you're really interested, if you are really interested in not spoiling it for yourself, then, you know, just don't listen to that part. So the five minutes are starting now. Drake, what did you think about Bioshock Infinite? Well, I'm still kind of mulling over it, but first hand, perfect. Oh, yeah. It's like, we played it, for, it, it, I, played, I played it for 16 hours. So it's, it's about 16 hours long. Would have done it consecutively, except we had to sleep. Yeah, we had to sleep and we had to eat and, you know, class, you know, who needs class? But, you know, we had to do that. So, uh, but yeah, so we beat it in about 15 hours and, like, from the trailer, you, everyone knows this from the trailer, but the Skyhook thing, I thought that that, that like, really added, like, a whole level, like, just up and beyond, behind, you know, further than, like, like, it, it could have been just, like, a regular shooter, right? And if it was a regular shooter, it'd be a great oh, yeah. game. But they made it not just a regular shooter. They made it, like, a fantastic shooter by uh, putting in the Skyhook system. I, I mean, I, I can't explain, like, why it's so great without you actually playing it, but... It becomes another weapon in your arsenal. Yeah, it's almost like... Because it's not like, you know, it's like, in some games they give you a jetpack, right? But jetpacks are almost like, they're too much. Because you have, like, too much freedom of movement. But the Skyhook has a definite path where you can make certain movements and... Oh, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. What, what else? I'm, I'm trying to think of what we can talk about without being without spoiling. Because I don't want to talk about the story too much. I want to talk about the game. Uh, there are definitely bits. It's just like Bioshock 1. If you go forward, you'll not be able to go back. Yeah. It, uh, secret bits. I mean, you can go back, play it a second time, but just keep in mind. Yeah, if you miss a secret, you, you, you miss that secret. It's actually... It's a game that's linear... It's because it's. I mean, you, you revisit some places, but it's pretty linear. Um, but there's a real sense of like it. It might as well be an open world because the linear world is so large that it almost feels open world. You know what I mean? You feel like it's some entire area rather than like a rail shooter. Like yeah. Half Life's a great game, but you know definitely where you're supposed to go. Yeah, like there are it's invisible like walls in and stuff. Being in a tunnel, and this is like. Walking in an open field. Yeah. And um, another thing that I thought was really cool is that you never die. When you're, when, you're, when you're out of life, not to spoil, you know, too much, but, like, I won't say how it happens, but you... They have, very, they have a very clever way of you not dying. You know, you have a, a companion, and she'll, you know, revive you or, you know, pick you up, or, you know, if she's not there, there'll be something else. It's just, it's really cool how they actually tie it all, toge tie it all together in the end. Because when I first saw... The revive, I was like, oh, that's kind of stupid. It seems, you know, almost like magic-y. But now that I've seen the end, I'm like, oh. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. Even this little part. Yeah, it's just like the, the entire game was just this big integral hole where, like, things in the beginning made sense in the end. You don't want to make a judgment about the game before you finish it. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we, we had the mistake of doing that, I think. It's about more, me more than you. Is I, I, like, <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, I was thinking about the game. I was playing it, and I was like... I was think I was making comments and judgments, and I really wish that I hadn't until I finished it. You know what I mean? Because it was just so. It, it's such a complete hole. You can't have a part of it. Like one of my friends walked in while I was playing the last little bit, and he's like, "Oh, this doesn't look that good. It doesn't. You know, it looks just kind of average. I'm not. I might not buy this." And I had to pause the game and tell him that you're wrong. You can't experience just one little bit of the game and expect to like understand the game. You have to play it from literally the first second to the last second. And then and then watch the credits. <laughs> and make sure you watch the credits because shit goes down. Like I don't know I'm not going to say There's some of the cooler credits that I've ever seen. Yeah, no no, the, the credits are actually really fantastic. They have uh I won't spoil what it is, but they have a they have a thing at the end that's really cool. 
uh, even like during the credits than after the credits. Make sure you watch the credits. Um, but yeah, we we have a little while left before we can start going into spoilers. So um, gameplay is clean. You know what I liked? You know what I liked? In Bioshock One, you have you never have to switch out weapons, right? You have always have. Well, you haven't played it though, have you? A little bit. Okay. Well, you you always have all the weapons. You always have the machine gun, the shotgun, the uh, pistol, and uh, there's I think there's one other. I'm not sure. But um, po point being is that you uh, you always have all those guns. You never have to trade them out. In this game, you can only have two guns at a t two guns at a time. But but there's a lot more guns. There are a lot of guns in this game. Oh yeah. Like there's the, there's the typical you know shotgun. Machine gun, sniper rifle, but then there's like better versions of all of those. But the better versions actually act differently. You know, it's it's really cool the way they just the whole weapon the weapon design in this game is fantastic. All right, so we are at the five minute mark, about about there. So we're gonna start dropping story bombs. Drake, what is the first story? What is the first thing you want to talk about with the story? Everyone dies. Okay, no, that's wrong. <laughs> um, you you start losing track of where the story. Is like is yeah. going in the middle. The Elizabeth, uh, really, she's the main character. She starts tearing realities that don't exist, and you don't know where it's really going. Oh, I, I need to speak a little closer to the microphone. Yeah. Uh, but um, no, 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 like yeah, she's, yeah. At first, you see her like tear this thing, tear reality apart, and it's really funny. She tears it apart. And, and she goes to Paris in, like, the 70s, the 80s. I guess it'd be 81. And you just see a movie theater saying, La retourne de Jedi. And I, it... And Mad World's playing in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. And then, you, and then but your guy, your guy, Booker, just kind of shrugs it off, and he's like, oh, whatever, you know. And then she does it again and again. And eventually, it becomes a tool you can use. You'll see, like, a shiny little thing... And it'll say ammo box, but there'll be no ammo box there, or, or something like that. And you know, say Elizabeth, you know, do it, and she'll she'll be like, okay, got and you it. You can only have one at a time. Only one at a time. But she'll hit this thing, and then all of a sudden, this ammo box will appear. And then they'll be you'll be like, I need cover. And you press F, and she'll like pop up cover for you. This is for the computer version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I played the PC version. Drake, you played the PS3 version. Yeah. Okay. Um, Both have their own bugs, but oh, that's great actually game. that's actually a good thing to talk about the bugs. Yes. Okay. When I played the game, I had a, a lot. I had a lot of graphical glitches. The game crashed. The game wouldn't load. The game uh, would stutter. Have frame rate issues. And my computer is fine. My computer can run Crisis at forty frames per second or more on the highest settings. My computer can run this game. Uh, but the game is not well optimized. It is, there's something wrong with it. You know, it's like, th that's probably my biggest gripe is that throughout like the whole like first three hours of the game, I was just playing with the settings, trying to make it not, um, stutter. Uh, cause the frame rate was fine, but every now and then you, it would just, the game would just stop and the music would keep playing, but the game would just stop and you had to wait for like a minute and then it would continue again and then the frame rate would get slow, and then it would speed up, and it was just really a problem. So I eventually actually put the graphics on the lowest setting, which, it still looked fantastic, it looked fantastic even on the oh, lowest yeah. setting, but it was kind of disappointing that I couldn't really appreciate it in all its, in all its splendor, uh, because it was just poorly optimized, or poorly coded, or the engine was bad. I mean, it's not a bad engine, it's, uh, it's something about it, something about it made it not work well, and that kind of pissed me off. Um, but... Other than that, yeah, it was not a real problem. But yeah, you played the PC, the PS3 version. I played the PC version, and um, from what you saw, because from what you saw, is there like any difference between the two, or is it just just the control scheme? No, and it's the graphics settings aren't that much better for the console versus like the PC. It's gonna be the same experience. Yeah, I, honestly, th this game shines in the art style, not the gra not the physical, just like. It's not about how much raw power you can have to pump out the most amount of polygons and textures uh, because it, it's all about just uh, the world that they build and how beautiful it is. And it looks great, like I said, even on the lowest settings, it still looks beautiful. So, you know, you don't have to worry about, like, if, you, like, if you're like, I would still recommend the PC version just because I'm a PC gamer and I always have been. Uh, oh, yeah, I go all PC. Yeah, so, but, um, 
What about that bomb at the end? With the oh, we talk about the bomb at the end with yes. the story. Okay. You okay. figure out what all those terrors mean. It yeah. all leads up to one point. I don't want to like I st- like even though we said we'd spoil things. I don't want to like completely ruin it. It it makes a full loop. You start yeah. at the beginning and you end at the beginning. Or do you begin at the end? Or does it even exist? That's that's a great question. That is a great question. Did any of it ever happen? I, I don't know. I don't know. Because it might have. But you visit Rapture, by the way. For a brief moment, you do visit Rapture. Which, you know, I thought was very cool. It was like, a, it's just like a, it's like a short little, like, she opens up a tear, and you just, like, pop in Rapture for, like, ten seconds. And I just thought it was one of the cool, I, it flipped my shit. It, it blew my mind, just the, the way that they just integrated this, like... The way that they integrated Bioshock 1 into this game without actually making the game Bioshock 1 relevant to this at all, like, it was... I, I can't even explain it, basically. No words. No words. It's Or yet, we might figure out the true meaning. In Bioshock Infinite 2. Infin- infinite harder. <laughs> infinity times infinity. Infinity times infinity. It's double infinity! Also known as Still Infinity. But, um, yeah, I, th- I think I'm going to cut it off here unless you have anything else to say. No. Nah. So, uh, what would you give it as a score? Like, it's kind of fresh right now, but like... T- five out of five. Five out of five? You're going off a five-point a five point scale? Or? That's all I can do right now. Okay. I would give it... Okay. I'm going to give it two different scores, actually. Okay. With the graphical bugs, like, if they had persisted, if I had not figured out how to uh, solve them, it would have been an eight out of ten. But since I did solve them and they stopped being a problem and I stopped noticing them, because I, you know, I looked around the internet for a while saying, how do I fix the stuttering issue in Bioshock Infinite? You know, if you can find a good, you know, resource page where they tell you what to do. With those problems fixed, 10 out of 10, no doubt. 11 out of 10. 12 out of, 12, 12 out of 11. <laughs> We're going to kick it up a notch. It's just, it's just, it, it couldn't be better. It might, it, it might be my favorite game of all time. It might have unseated Ocarina of Time as the greatest game I've ever played. And that's hard to do. So... I think this is it. Drake, you can say your goodbye. Goodbye, YouTube. And I will say my goodbye. Goodbye, YouTube as well. And uh, we are out.